Hello, my name is Stéphane Zuli. I'm a young cardiologist from Nancy University Hospital. And um, I'm involved in the Cardiologist of Tomorrow program. And for the second year, I'm glad to be here today to interview the stars of cardiology. And in order to have an interaction between mentors and mentees. And today, I'm very happy to be here with Professor Bassan, who was the president of the European Society of Cardiology and also the chief of the department of cardiovascular disease in Besançon in France. So if you don't mind, Professor Bassan, uh, let's start with your uh, professional life and your uh, education in cardiology. Why did you choose medicine? Well, that's a, that's a pretty good question. I choose medicine at the end of uh, secondary school. I remember exactly the place where I made my decision. This was at the end, not at the end, but uh, at the time of the result of what is called in France baccalauréat, marking the end the, of uh, secondary school. So I passed the exam and then I met my math teacher in the surroundings. And he asked me, well, Basson, you, you had a you passed the exam, you were quite good. What are you going to do in the, in the future? And I just answered, medicine. Like that? Like that. And I, oh, you want to become a doctor? I say, yes, I want to become a doctor. But when did you make the decision? Right now. <laughs> so absolutely true. And so I was not, uh, let's say, decided long before I made my decision. I just decided, what are you going to do now? Medicine. And it's absolute absolute truth. You were a bit surprised, but uh, absolutely right. And why did you choose uh, cardiology later on? That's also a very tricky question. <laughs> and um, as uh, you, well, you know that in the past, uh, the organization of medical school and medical cities were a little bit different as compared to what they are now. And you had to go for four or five years in, at medical schools and then go for a contest to become a resident. It's not an exam, it's a contest. And you could go to many different places uh, to test your possibility, your capacity to win the contest. And then you could choose a university, whatever it is, where you had a reasonable chance to adopt, to go for a specific discipline. And uh, I went to different places, including Nancy, but just by chance, my position after the contest in, in my home university was just great, much better than in any other cities. That's the reason why I stayed in Besançon. But I'm not answering really your question. And the reason why I chose cardiology was in 1971. You were not even born. And at this time, cardiology was virtually not existing. It was more or less a 19th century uh, discipline. We had already coronary angiography, bypass graft surgery, but from the 70s, the beginning of 70s, then the progress went up exponentially. But at this time, I made the decision because for me, in cardiology, everything was simple. It looked like a very simple discipline. You just need to ask questions of the patient, go for physical examination, listen to the heart sound, a little bit of phonomechanography and EKG, and that was it. So it looked like a very easy discipline. I have to add a few things. 40 years later, I changed my mind. It's not that simple, but it's a very exciting discipline. I do not regret at all, because during the last 30, 40 years, this is where the largest amount of progress has been made and makes this discipline really, really exciting. And um, have you been a good student at that time? Well, I was, I was not too bad. I was what we call the major, the major of internet number one of the contest. Oh, really? so that, and that's the reason why I stayed on my home university, because I was 100% sure to choose my discipline. And what were your dreams when you were studying cardiology? Well, uh, in 1971, cardiology simply did not exist in, in, in this hospital. Uh, there was no department of cardiology. The cardiology patients were everywhere in, in other disciplines and mostly internal medicine. 
And then we had to start from scratch. And um, I joined, let's say, the embryo, embryo of, of the cardiology department with my boss. He was a boss, I was a resident. And we started, the two of us, to develop the department of cardiology. And my dream at this time was to go abroad, preferably in the United States, for at least six months, preferably a year, to gain enough training, training and expertise, come back, and then speed up the process of developing a department of cardiology. But at that time, it was not that easy. Funding was a real issue, and my dream never come true. So my whole career, oh, I don't like this word, I prefer professional life, was in my department, and I rushed here and there for a week, two weeks, a month, to gain expertise in different uh, universities, but my dream was to go for uh, at least a year in the US, and this dream never come true. Okay, and could you tell us a little bit more about your mentor, your boss? You mean the mentor? Yes. My mentor? Well, my mentor was my boss, and his name is Jean-Pierre Mora. It's not so well known in, in, in the cardiology field. He's almost 90 years old now, and uh, but uh, he was, I said that already once, uh, some kind of 19th century cardiologist. In other words, he didn't move up the progress. He learned cardiology in a very, what we call, used to call in France, a chapel. There were two chapels in, in Paris, the Soulier Chapel and the Le Nègre Chapel. He was from the Soulier School of Medicine. And he had paid great respect to his boss. But he was trained at the time, there was no equipment, there was no investigation possible, and he, didn't, he never moved on. But I pay tribute to him because he never lost his interest for the discipline, never lost his capacity of being astonished by new things, even though he did not embark. But he was constantly encouraging his, uh, let's say, collaborators, never criticizing them, encouraging them, not really helping them, but always enthusiastic about what we were developing, doing for the department. So it's a good example of a good boss. The good boss is the one who gives direction and give encouragement to, uh, to uh, the collaborators. The bad boss is the one who stops them and do not want to have them developing any, few, any different technique. So he was my mentor, but you know, over time, I've met so many people and uh, met so impressive, impressive key opinion leaders, researchers in the field of cardiology that I've got many, many mentors. And um, I had a great privilege to meet a lot of them all over the planet because gradually I became involved in many international activities. And regarding that time when, when you were <clears throat> uh, in uh, the United States, do you think that it's very important for a young cardiologist to go abroad? Well, it depends on what a young cardiologist wants to, want to do. And um, I don't know for your own uh, department of cardiology, uh, my impression is that most of the residents who join a department of cardiology in a university hospital come to learn cardiology, get certification in the discipline, certification in the subspecialty, and particularly imaging or angiography and PCI, and then they want to go practicing in private practice. So my comments are for the others, those who want, those who want to stay in the Department of Cardiology for a few years or many, several years if possible, and want to get involved in research, whatever it is, basic research or clinical research. So my recommendation for to these people, I would say three words. Work, work, work. <laughs> Never stop working. Never stop dreaming of something better and try to get your enthusiasm intact for your lifetime. And go abroad. Don't stay on the spot. 
go abroad, anywhere. You can go to Germany. Germany is very, very good at, in cardiology. If you speak German, so you, you have big opportunities for further training in Germany. Go to the United States and the major, you, you will gain, they will gain a completely different vision of one cardiology, second of the world. If you stay in the same university, never move, then you are more or less aging prematurely. So keep your enthusiasm intact, work like hell, and go abroad, and come back with expertise and new enthusiasm. Thank you so much for all these <laughs> tremendous advices for young cardiologists, and thank you so much for this inspiring interview. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.